my name is Julian. Today we're looking at a small passage from Mark's Gospel, but I think it'll be appropriate to start with some prayer just to focus our minds. Then we'll read the passage and then I'll give you something to think about. So let's pray. Father God, thank you that we have the freedom and the ability to gather together at this time to have a look at your word. Thank you, Lord, for your word, which comes to us so that we can learn from it and we can encourage ourselves and encourage other people. Father God, please, will you bless this time today that we're all together? Please, can we hear your voice? Please, can we learn from each other? Please, can we be challenged? And as we go forward throughout today, please, can you be with us? Amen. So everyone, today I'm reading from Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, and it goes like this. Jesus then left that place and went into the region of Judea and across the Jordan. Again, crowds of people came to him, and as was his custom, he taught them. Some Pharisees came and tested him by asking, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? What did Moses command you, he replied. They said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. It was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law, Jesus replied. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh so that they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. When they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this, and he answered, anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. So, if you remember back to, um, back to when we started Mark's Gospel, where I'm just flicking back here, page turning noises. So we looked right at the beginning and we had, so Jesus spoke to a tax collector and the Pharisees saw him eating with the sinners and said, boy, what's going on? And then some of John's disciples were fasting. And the Pharisees were fasting and the Pharisees went up to Jesus and said, Oi, you're not fasting. What's going on? And then when they were walking through the grain fields and his disciples started to pick um, some food and the Pharisees saw what was going on and they said, Oi, what's going on? And then they went into the synagogue and healed someone on the Sabbath. And the Pharisees said, Oi, what's going on? So it's one of those things, I think, if someone comes along with a new teaching that we don't quite understand, we're often apt to say, what's going on here? And here we have something. We've got the, the teachers of the law who've been studying the law for a long time, since it was given, and they think they've got all their rules and regulations sorted out. But if you cast your mind forwards a few centuries to only 70 years ago, C.S. Lewis wrote a book called The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. And in it, a oh, white witch wants to kill someone and she invokes the magic. But Aslan comes along and invokes the deeper magic. And in the same way here, we've got the Pharisees saying, ah, well, Moses said. And Jesus said, yes, but God's intention was. Which kind of trumps everything. So. I was thinking at us, there's an obvious application here about divorce. But when, when something comes along and it's different to what we expect the teaching to be, do we just rule it out of hand and clearly the person's a nutcase because we completely understand all the interpretation of our Bibles? Or are we curious to know actually what the nubbins of what they're saying is? Do they have insight or not? It's possible that they could be heretics. It's possible they might be misguided. It's possible they've actually got a very challenging and pertinent question that's important to our lives at this time. And I don't think we need to rule it out of hand. So one of the verses, one of the study books I was looking at, 
in relation to this, said hardness of heart because there was hard hearted rebellion against God amongst you, leading to serious defilement of marriages and not only hard hearted people would initiate a divorce. So in our society today, is there sin in the community that meant marriages would be defiled? And therefore, is God actually making it so that it's a, a way that people can live, which is not his ideal? Is there hard heartedness in us? Is there hard heartedness in our church? And is there hard heartedness in the people around us? And are we always following God's word as we should be? So a bit of a heavy one there. Let's not forget that we are loved, restored, redeemed, as we studied in Colossians earlier this year. But um, something to ponder on.